Okay, so here we are looking at the classic and uh, what I'm getting for an input here at the height of the day. And uh, there's still a few more hours of sunlight, so I'm going to be um, having plenty of extra power coming in. But you can see that uh, the classic is handling it because uh, I have six uh, panels at 305 watts each coming into this unit. And uh, it's been said that uh, this this uh, classic Midnight Classic 150 only handles um, 1,200 watts. Okay, but I think the classic itself is designed to protect from overages. So I don't understand why somebody would say you can't put the overages in there. I guess it doesn't make any sense to do it because. Um, you've got the extra going in, but it's not going anywhere because the um, the controller is uh, uh, making sure that it doesn't damage anything. But you can see I have 87.4 volts, so 87.6, uh, fluctuating up and down there. Uh, that's because there's a couple of clouds out there that keep breaking the sun. Just little clouds, not anything big. And I'm running anywhere from uh, 790 to 800 and something watts coming in out of those uh, uh, 1300 well, is it 13 1800 watts so it's actually limiting my input of wattage down to into the 900 watt range so and that's what I should be getting anyway because I have two strings I have that all those panels broken down into two strings um, coming in at like 915 watts each so that would be the 1830 total but um, I think the two strings themselves are also limiting. But as you can see, I'm also, I've also got 60 amps coming in. So, and the batteries are at 13.4, and I'm floating because 13.4 uh, means the batteries are well 100% charged. Now the Renogy is saying I got 13.6, and we go through some of the numbers on that, and this is using 100 watt panels, okay? So I'm taking in 65.2 volts on this one, at 4.5 amps, okay, 100% on the batteries, and 13.6 in the batteries. So they were they were pretty much agreeing. Um, that's the amps going out because I'm running this these fans off of that to keep the units cool. And I've got 80 amp hours through this system um, saved for the day, and the. Uh, auxiliary is using 15 amp hours so 45 degrees Celsius is the temperature of the batteries 15 me is the code meaning there's no errors oh no that means 15 is the code that means that auxiliary stays on and this is uh, errors zero so there's no no errors and then back to normal so I just noticed that my my other little unit here is not working. My other fan here. And that usually means that uh, I've got a disconnected wire somewhere. Oh yeah, there it is. It, it's right in this connection right here. So I'll be taking this apart and uh, soldering these, these connections so that I don't have to worry about that again. There we go. That blows air right up through the unit and out the back because the energy gets a lot hotter than the classic. I mean, that's almost hot to the touch, and this one's cool. But uh, it's actually this one's actually handling more power. But I think when uh, the money's available, I'm going to be ordering another Midnight Classic. And uh, I might um, either put my uh, wind turbine on there, my PMA on the, on the, the X second one, or I might split um, these panels and put one string in this one, one string in the other one, and see if that makes any difference. Yeah, you get to experiment with stuff like that, so why not, right? So anyway... 
just wanted to do this uh, little video and I didn't do my classic, uh, uh, well, hello everybody and welcome to G-Bear's Off-Grid Way, the homestead in the desert. But uh, yeah, um, getting some things put, put together here. I'm limping around today because uh, I uh, foolishly went out in the dark last night with the uh, leftover scraps from supper. Why am I blurry out here? That's weird. Oh, there we go. Anyway, the uh, uh, I went out with the scraps last night, barefooted. Well, I'm bare with my feet, right? Anyway, I um, I stepped on a pyramid-shaped little tiny rock, about the size of a walnut, right in the center of my right heel. And the pain that shot up when I put all my weight down on that thing, because I was just at making strides, the pain that shot up through my leg was equivalent to uh, somebody driving a nail into your knee. It really hurt. So I twisted my ankle trying to get off of that rock quickly, but it was too late. I'd already done the damage and the point of the rock actually hit a pressure point in my heel that uh, really caused me some pain. So for the past day, I've been laying down in bed and uh, resting it, taking it easy. And I've been rubbing some Arnica gel on it to uh, get rid of the pain and, uh, or get rid of the pain and swelling. And tonight I'm going to soak it again in uh, Epsom salts and by tomorrow I should be able to get around pretty good. Just one of those things, you know. We try to cut corners and it never works. I could have just put my flip-flops on. I could have stepped on that rock and it would have gone ow with a pair of flip-flops, but it wouldn't have caused... The damage it did to my ankle so of course I'm gonna to have to limp around for a little while no biggie um, I was thinking that in my garden I have uh, planted and I'm sorry about the upright camera uh, that's uh, just the way you're gonna to have to look at it on this trip I wasn't gonna actually post this when I was gonna do this as a private video uh, for someone anyway uh, I was thinking that in my garden, I grow uh, parsley and sage and rosemary. I want to just think of why am I growing any thyme? Because uh, I heard somewhere that thyme heals all wounds. Oh my gosh. Oh, anyway. So anyway, I'm going to go back in and soak my uh, twisted ankle. But I guess a twisted ankle is better than a twisted sister, right? Oh, now another one. All right. That's all I really have. Thanks everybody for joining me. Don't forget to give me thumbs ups down there. Don't forget to subscribe and share. This is G-Bear signing off.